ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards. Blair's Cove House stands at the head of Dunmanus Bay in West Cork. It's an elegant Georgian country house with four guest suites and a superb restaurant. I've come to Blair's Cove to cook with chef Ronald Klutzer. And when I told the owners, Philip and Sabine, that I'd gone to Rory Connor to get a beautiful oyster knife, they presented me with a plate of oysters. Now that's customer service. So this is my first time using the knife and it's absolutely beautiful. The amount of work that's gone into it. So I'm gonna open an oyster. Now when you're opening an oyster, Safety is very important, so you use a tea towel and then you just go back to the back of the muscle and just put a little bit of pressure and just try and get the point in there as much as possible. Just squeeze it down. Perfect. Loosen it out and that's it there. Beautiful oyster. Little squeeze of lemon. You can put a little bit of Tabasco or shallot, something like that. I'm going to loosen it up. Usually in the restaurant, I like to poach oysters. And I like to poach them for about maybe 10, 15 seconds. And a little bit of coconut milk, a little bit of wilted spinach, smoked bacon, that kind of thing. And it's just beautiful. So lift it up and down the hatch. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Now that set me up for the kitchen. Ronald, lovely to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you. You have a beautiful restaurant here. Thank you. So what are you going to cook for me today? We have a fresh whole turbot. We're going to serve it on the bone, grilled, with wilted sea beet, which is a plant you find down by the beach. It's sea spinach, we call it. OK. So which is a little firmer than spinach, but it wilts very nicely. It's serving never the Dijon mustard hollandaise. What weight is this fish now? It's four and a half to five kilos. There's a lot of preparation in this. Yes. So you're going to educate me now how to prepare the turbot. <laughs> we'll try. OK, I'll give you a hand. So what we're going to do first is cut it to portion size. You can take off the head. Yes. This has the cheeks. Yes, of course. You can also use it for stock. What I like to do is to cut the fins off. Because once you cook it, the fins, they burn yes. on the grill. So where do you get this fish? Is it a locally caught fish? It's locally caught fish off a trawler. You have great fish down here, don't you, in shellfish? You have Castletown bear and skibberine. Oh, and lovely yeah. products. Yeah, super products, yeah. Okay, so you've removed the fin. Remove the fins. Yeah. Turn it around. We're going to have to split it in half. There's a bone which runs from here mm -hmm. to there. Next, if you can see, there's a little yeah. line right there. Mark this. Split the fin, get a towel. And you basically cut right on the middle. A good heavy knife is the central. Yeah. You let it fall. So the weight is helping you too when it's pushing down. So you're almost done. So many portions would you get out of this fish now? Eight or nine maybe. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. It's like a steak. I like to serve it on the bone because it retains moisture. Yeah. Because it's not easily overcooked like this. Yeah. Now this are ready to be cleaned and washed and cooked afterwards. We're going to season it with a little Irish sea salt. Just easily, not too much. Coat it mm. in a little oil. It rips it on. I'm going to put it straight onto the grill. Okay. So the grill has got to be preheated nice and hot. Nice and hot, or otherwise it sticks. So how long do you give that on one side? Three, four minutes, and then I turn it. The way you work your menu here, you have a buffet laid out right. for starters. Yep. And then people pick their main course, and then they have a buffet dessert. Isn't that's that good, good, that's correct. And how many items would you have on the buffet? I hear it's fantastic. On a starter buffet, I would say at least about 15 to 20 items, roughly, wow. including oysters, prawns from this bay. How yes. many people would the restaurant seat? On a busy night, I would say around 75 to 80. Would you be out here cooking in front of the guests, or do you have some? Actually, I'm mm. running in the back kitchen. You're, I have you're okay. One of my girls from the front kitchen. So, Ronald, what about the kitchen here? Like, you have the wood here. What, 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 what happens behind us here? Well, we cooked all our, all our meat on this open grill. It gives a nice charred flavor, texture. Mm -hmm. We do a 21 dry aged ribeye for two on the bone. And we also do our lamb, our Irish lamb here, and our fillets. And we'll give this a little turn. Beautiful. This is an ingredient that I haven't really used. I've seen it in menus. Do you just pick that down in the bed? That's correct. There? Yes, and then you have to wash it really well. It's so sea beet or sea spinach. Sea beet. Yeah. Does it taste salty on its own? This little bit. Mm. You're familiar with sunfire? Yes, yeah, we use sunfire. It's, it's, it's a spray of the yeah. salt. Actually, most of the plants in this world get this salty texture from. Mm. Well, we can start separating eggs for the holidays. Perfect, of course. See, two egg yolks yes. in the bowl. A little bit of water, just a touch. Otherwise, we would be making scrambled eggs. That's about a two teaspoon of salt. Okay. okay. Now, there's several ways of making a holiday. Some chefs use a double boiler. Yes. Um, which is what they teach in school. But in real life, if you're familiar with the temperature and the heat, you can actually do it straight on the stove. I whisk these on the low heat to ribbon stage. That's a very clever tip. See how the eggs steam already? Yeah. 
in a hot pickens. Because you can be there for 10 or 20 minutes whisking it on a double boiler. That's brilliant. I'm mm -hmm. already here. Yeah. Next step is clarified butter. Make sure the butter's not too hot, yes. not too cold. So just a little at a time, it's not the secret. And you see how the egg yeah. is starting to shine a little bit? Mm. It means there's a good fat content in the sauce now. If it gets too thick, it's too rich. Now, I would say that's enough butter for you. A little bit of sea salt. So that lovely consistency. And a little bit of mustard. Any particular mustard? You can Dijon or whole yeah. grain mustard. It's gorgeous. How long would that hold now when you make it? A good hollandaise should be holding all service long. If it's kept at the right temperature, That's a great it tip. should not separate it. So it's still not cooked now, it needs to... Still not cooked, okay. but it's not far away. Now, we're going to put this in the oven. Yep. What temperature is the oven? It's 180 degrees. 180. For how long? Uh, about four minutes, five four minutes. Four minutes, brilliant. Five okay. Minutes. I'm going to wilt a little bit of sea beet. Okay. Do you have to prepare it the same as spinach? Is there a vein or a stalk? Yeah, there is, and I had to pull them off, yes. Okay. And I washed okay. it about three times. It's a little bit of sand on the leaves. You do your own foraging. I do. I like it. I can remove my fish now. It's, okay. it's, it's cooked. And how do you know what's cooked in the bone? You know, because people would be nervous. Well, this. get a fork. Yeah. And if you stick your fork into the fish and you feel no resistance, ah. it goes straight to. That's a very good tip. And it's cooked. Rip it all. Good amount of sea spinach. You just cook it very quick, just to very work. quickly, and it pops. High heat, a little bit of oil. That's the Hollanders. So colourful, isn't it? So good. Wow. A couple of pea shoots. And that's all you take. That's beautiful. So now I get to taste it. Go right ahead. It's so moist, isn't it? A great way of cooking it on the bone. Lovely hollandaise. Oh, I love that. It's absolutely delicious. Thank you so much for cooking Thanks. with me. Thanks for I wish you and the team continued success. Thank you very you much. You truly have a magical place here in Bridgeheads Cove. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. In the next programme, I meet Ireland's only commercial blackcurrant grower. Have tea in some vintage tea rooms and enjoy a plate of ham, pork and bacon in Limerick City. And of course I'll be doing some cooking of my own on board the Shannon Princess. I hope you'll join me.